Um, I think this thing we're about to look at now is probably the most important part of integration, okay? This is incredibly important part of it. The reverse chain rule, if I had to guess the reverse chain rule, I would say out of the questions that you do, maybe 50% of the time, it's reverse chain rule, okay? Even though this is just skill number four and we've got 12 different skills, you might think, oh, it's gonna happen one twelfth of the time. I would probably say, and I haven't really looked into this in much detail, probably half the time, it's the reverse chain rule. And it's the thing that you're gonna learn after this skill. We're gonna learn some skills that feel a bit more like, great, we can just use a formula here. You're gonna try and make everything be like the formula ones. And actually, it's probably not gonna be that kind of thing. So you must check if it's going to be this thing that we call the reverse chain rule because it makes, it makes the integration suddenly go super easy. This is a very, very big area of integration. Don't just think because we're doing it for like half of a lesson that it's not a big deal. This is a very, very big deal in terms of integration. So um, there are certain more complicated expressions which look like they are the result of having applied the chain rule. And the process that we're going to do for doing the reverse chain rule, we call it consider then scale because there are two stages to what you should be doing in this problem. First of all, you consider a particular expression that you think will differentiate to give something similar to it. So you actually kind of like consider, you guess what the final, uh, what the result should be. You consider what the result could be. And then you differentiate it and you adjust your answer to scale for any difference between what it has actually differentiated to and what you wanted it to differentiate to. This sounds a bit abstract until we have a look at this with an example here. I've got three of them where I've actually explained a bit about what I'm thinking about when I look at these questions. So when I want to try and integrate this kind of function here, it looks like the result of differentiating something. The x that I have outside the front looks like here, I've said the first x looks like it arose from differentiating the x squared inside the brackets this thing looks like the derivative of this thing here. That should remind you of something from differentiation, when the thing outside the front is the derivative of the thing inside. The chain, the chain rule, hence this being the reverse chain rule. This looks like some relationship to the result of something that, was dif that has differentiated to give us something that looks like this. So what do we think? If we're going to consider what the result could have been, what could have differentiated this? Good, x squared plus five, whoops, weird bracket, to the power of four. This is what we think it could be. So I'm now going to scale it. So I'm going to do the differentiating. I'm gonna differentiate it and see what I get. When I differentiate it, I would get four x squared plus five cubed multiplied by 2x. So although it's actually an x, it's actually we would have had a 2x from the chain rule. So we have 8x, one second, x squared plus 5 cubed. Ah, cool. So if it was this, if, if we thought it integrated to this, we would have got this. But we didn't want it to be this. Instead, we only want it to have an 8 at the beginning. So the scaling will be we want one eighth of it. So the integral of x, x squared plus five cubed with respect to x is going to be x squared plus five to the power of four times by an eighth. Let's just double, let's re this is so important. Let's just actually remind ourselves what I've said here. I'm gonna differentiate this to show you that it gives you this thing at the top. So very quickly, if I was going to differentiate this, I've got the eighth. What else do I have when I differentiate? What else am I going to be multiplying by when I differentiate this using the chain rule? Pardon? No, I will have the derivative of this, which is just the 2x. I'll have the power, which is 4. And I will reduce the power by 1. So I have an 8 times 2x times 4. What does all of that simplify to? X. X. 
and then I've got x squared plus 5 cubed. Really, really, really important. We were allowed to do this because this bit here looks a bit like the derivative of this thing. It's not exactly the same, but it's clearly related to it in some way. This bit, whoops, not that bit. This bit here, you might just do this somewhere else in the page. You might do that to the right-hand side if you're working out. That's your thinking. I wouldn't do, you probably could do this in your head eventually. I can sort of do this in my head. But at this stage, you probably want to write out, well, I think it's going to be this. I'll differentiate it. Ah, it's nearly what I wanted. I just need an eighth of it. So I'll go back to the beginning and I'll put an eighth in to make it the right size. Any questions on that first one? Because we're about to look at one with a trig example as well. We will obviously do a lot of examples of this too. And there's Harry. Hello, perfect. Just when we're doing reverse channel, we can do with your help. Okay, so this one that I've got here. Oh no, terrible line drawing there. We have got cos x sine squared x. Now, the thing that we should notice here is that the cos x has probably come up from differentiating the sine function, OK? Yes? No. Because you would have a sine 2x, something to do with sine 2x, but you'd still have an extra sine x because it's sine squared x. So what we've got here, it looks like that cos x is the result of having differentiated the sine x. So the, th the thing I'm going to consider as my function, what do you think I should consider the answer might be? Sine cubed x. Good, really, really good. I'm going to write it like this, sine cubed x, or sine x cubed. Now, I'm going to differentiate it, and I'm going to see what happens. If I differentiate this, Zubair, what will happen when I differentiate sine x cubed? Good. But now we're going to need to scale this. We don't want the answer to be 3 cos x sine squared x. We want it to just be cos x sine squared x. Hamza, what do I do? I want a third. We want one third of it. So that tells me that the integral of cos x sine squared x with respect to x is, I'm going to have to do it underneath to get space, a third sine cubed x plus c. Again, this bit here is just going to be somewhere on the page. It's not a part of my working out. It is a part of my working out, but it's not a part of my, my question, in a way. Yeah, so idea. Because I know that sine x cubed will reduce the power down to sine squared x. And I know that when I differentiate that using the chain rule, an extra cos x is going to appear. Why does the extra cos x appear? By differentiating the derivative of blah. Good, it's the derivative of blah. So because that's the derivative of blah, it's great because like, I've got the derivative of blah and I've got blah squared. So I'm able to put that back into blah cubed, which is here. But I just need to scale that because I know that if it was bar blah cubed, I'd get an extra 3. And I don't want the 3, so I have to counteract that by putting in the third. Let's really, really quickly just differentiate that and check that it works. If I was going to differentiate this and check that it works, I would have a third times 3 from the power being brought down. I would reduce the power by 1 to sine squared x. And I would multiply by the derivative of sine x, which is cos x. The third and the 3 give us the 1. The sine squared and the cos x is what we wanted it to differentiate to. Remember, integration is anti-differentiation. So the last one that we're going to have a look at before I give you a bit of time to try some of them yourself, I think, is here. What kind of thing do we notice in this one? It says that the 2x probably arose from differentiating the x squared. So what type of thing do we think this might integrate to? Good. It's going to be an ln 
of x squared plus 1 because the top part is the derivative and the bottom part is the is what it the the thing that gives you the 2x when it differentiates so we're going to differentiate that and see what we get when we differentiate that we know we're going to have 1 over x squared plus 1 and we're going to multiply that by the derivative of the thing on the bottom which is 2x which we know is just the same as 2x over x squared plus 1. So no scaling required. So my answer is that the integral of 2x over x squared plus 1 with respect to x is ln of x squared plus 1 plus c. Again, this is something that you may do elsewhere on your page. I want to see it. I do want to see it. But this is really what we're just going to have as our answer that we'd be writing down there. I don't need to do the double check of the differentiation here because there was no scaling. Clearly, I've already differentiated that to get the answer, so nothing needs to be done there. I'm just going to give you 30 seconds to just look through what we did and really process what was there. And then at the end of that, I just want to hear if there are any other questions or things you want me to clarify. I cannot stress how important this bit is. So I'm just going to give you 30 seconds to have a read over those again. Pardon? This one needed no scaling because this was exactly the thing I was aiming for. Whereas this one, for example, was three times bigger than what I was aiming for, so I had to scale it by a third. And this one was eight times bigger, so I had to scale it by an eighth. Any other things here that, is, that you want me to just, I can, I'm happy to repeat anything I've said because I think that's important and other people probably want to hear things again. Yes, yeah, Sadia. So the last one, this time we recognise that the numerator was the derivative of the bottom bit. We can see that this top bit is the derivative of this bottom bit. So that looks like that we can do an ln. It's probably going to be ln because do you remember when we had ln of blah? That would differentiate to 1 over blah multiplied by the derivative of blah. So if the numerator is the derivative of the denominator, then it will go back to an ln of blah. This is the derivative of this, so it will go back to ln of blah. I'm going to just do a couple more of these for us to have a go at. Then you've got a page of them that you're going to try, and we'll check that we've all got them, and then we'll do some from the exercises as well. Okay. So, all I've written on this bit is kind of e explaining a bit about what we've just said here. And it says integration by inspection. You may see it called integration by inspection, which just is <laughs> them saying, look at it. Just look at it and try and work out what the answer is. But I like to call it the reverse chain rule as well, because it's us seeing that there's the chain rule looks like it's happened, and we know we can go backwards. So it says, use common sense, which I hope we've got to consider some expression that would differentiate to the expression given. Then you scale it appropriately. Common patterns of things you might see is just what I was talking about um, here, where you've got some kind of something multiplied by the, de the derivative of blah over blah. That's the bit that Sadia was just saying. That would go to ln of blah. In other words, if the bottom fraction differentiates to give the top, forgetting about the scaling, then try ln of the bottom. This is basically just a posh bit of saying, if you've got the derivative of something of the previous function raised to a power, you can also try and just raise the second one by a power of one and then do the scaling from there. So what about this one that we've got on the left hand side? What fact do you think I should consider? Ln. Good. I'm gonna consider ln of x cubed plus one. Why has has Musica suggested to do that? Because the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. It's not exactly the same as the top, but we're not bothered. It's mostly the same. It's got the x squared bit, which is the most important. So we're going to differentiate that and see what happens. Well, I know it's going to differentiate to 1 over x cubed plus 1 multiplied by the derivative of this, which is 3x squared. 
So what do I need to do for my scaling? I want a third of it because this is a third of this. So I actually want a third. So my answer to x squared over x cubed plus 1 with respect to x is a third of ln of x cubed plus 1 plus c. Yes? So what if there was like more than one x term with different degrees of fun? If it was like x squared plus 1? Like x squared plus x. If it was x squared plus x for something else, then we can't use the reverse chain rule, OK? That's when we're going to have to do things like partial fractions, or we're going to have to do other kinds of techniques that we have as well. Some of them we may not even be able to differentiate as part of, sorry, integrate as part of year, year 13 maths. It may get left to degree level or further maths or something like that, OK? Right. Again, this bit here, write that somewhere else on your page. But I do want to see it, OK? Just use a space on the page to do that. Um, who thinks that they can figure out what we're going to consider as our function here? Muzuki is doing a lot of the hard work here. I don't want him to be doing all the hard work. Hamza, what do you think? Um, oh, sorry, I meant the other Hamza, but that's fine. What, what, <laughs> <laughs> what did he say at the same time? Three, two, one. Yeah, we're going to consider e to the x squared plus 1. Can I just ask you why you thought that? Because you're right. But why did you consider that? <laughs> you don't know, Hamza, why then? Um, yeah, the, it, the derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x. So we know that when you do the chain rule to it, you would get that there. So let's differentiate it and see what happens you would get e to the x squared plus 1 multiplied by the derivative of that, which is 2x. So for scaling, we need to scale it by a half. So the integral of e <coughs> x, sorry, x e to the x squared plus 1 with respect to x is a half e to the x squared plus 1 plus c. OK? I'm going to stop there, and then I think I've got questions for you on the next page. Good, I do.